Hello, hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. And in this video, as you can see, I'm doing something different. We're in a different setup. We are doing a podcast, and I'm doing it with the one and the only. I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Hyun. Um, actually, my Chris while doing drag. Yes. Um, I met him them, I think, uh, like Trill. I yes. think I spoke to them first, and then yes, and I, then I met you. Yeah. Yes. And then, so. so we did a drag show together. Um, I think it was your first drag show. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it was their first drag show, and years later, literally, it's been years now. Yeah. We still know each other. We've done a lot of drag shows together. And they asked me to come and do their podcast. And I thought, why not film it so we can get the full experience? Um, okay. So real quick, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we're about to get right into this podcast gig, honey. Period. Yeah! Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Canepa. Today I have with me the one and only. Yes, my name is Chris Hankins. Hello everyone. Yeah, so I met Chris while performing drag. Every time except for two different times yeah. I've performed with them. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a few years. I think it's like four years that we've known each other yeah. now. Um, but yeah, today I have them over so we can talk a little bit about drag, our experience yes. with drag, as well as living life as a non-binary person in yes. the Bay Area. Yes, yes. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So, why don't you start drag? Like, what was the pro start. Yeah, what motivated you or inspired you? So, when I, when I was at Northern Arizona University, I went to my very first drag show. And it was put on by the LGBT club called PRISM at the time. And all my friends was like, you gotta come, you gotta come see this. And I was like, okay, I've never been to a drag show. So we go and I'm watching this drag show and I'm watching all these people perform. And my friend turns to me and she goes, I could see you up there. And in the moment I go, I promise you I said this. I was like, I would never do that. I would, n I'm not that kind of gay. That's what I said, honestly. Fast forward like three months later, <laughs> I was one of those gays. Honey, I'm talking wig, makeup, nails. But it happened because my friend Christian, who is still a good friend, who I kind of consider my drag mom, um, he really took a liking to me. Um, I later on joined PRISM. I became the president later on as well. Ooh, you, know, yes, you know, vibes, love that. you know, taking over. And I witnessed how drag made him feel. I saw how it brought light. I saw how it it gave him the attention that like I've always wanted you know like just as a gay person I, I like the spotlight honestly and drag was one of the ways that I received that and it was a way that allowed me to express my femininity that I didn't have before and so I, I fell in love with it and it was a struggle you as you know learning to do makeup learning to lip sync and stage presence and like doing that is not easy and I think it's something that you learn. And through like all of that is how Coco came about. I mean, I didn't have a drag name effort. Like Coco Minaj came about because I was gonna name myself Coco Chanel. And I thought that was too cheesy. And I was like, no. And I love Nicki Minaj. As you know, anytime I perform, I do a Nicki Minaj song. Yeah. Love and that. I love, I live. I, that's like my like, thing. Get it, girl. <laughs> you know a Nicki get song it. is coming at some point. And so I was like, okay, Minaj has to be the name because I didn't want Nikki as my first name. Yeah. And Co I was like, okay, Coco, Coco Minaj. And that was it. And that yeah. is years later, Coco yeah. Minaj. I love it. Yeah. I remember seeing you, you performed the first time I think you performed Nikki Minaj and also Rihanna. Beyonce. Be Beyonce. Dance for Dance for You. The second that time was the then. You, I oh. remember you performed. Uh, yo, yeah, you're right. Oh my yeah. god, we performed a few times together. Yeah, we perform every at least every single time that I perform, except two different times yes. I perform with you. Yes. Oh my god, that's so true. Yeah. Yes, I remember that one. That was my <laughs> very first show at San Jose State, and it was because of Sherelle. I had just moved back to the Bay Area, and I was telling one of my fraternity brothers, Ellie Reyes, mm -hmm. I was like, "Hey, I miss drag because I had just left this huge drag thing. I had done prides. I had been all over Arizona doing drag." And he was like, you gotta meet my friend Sherelle and they're gonna get you in the drag scene. And I was like, you know, I was like, okay, like whatever. And lo and behold, I talked to Sherelle and literally a week later, she was like, I got you in a show. You're gonna do the San Jose, you got two numbers. I was like, damn, okay. And that was it. 
love it. I know. That's my first time in general yeah. performing. Um, I saw the flyer. I forgot who posted it. Someone on my Instagram posted mm -hmm. the flyer. Um, and it said that the show was going to be in like a month or so. Yeah. And I was like, at that time, I was like, I feel like I was starting to learn more about myself yes. like yeah. I was watching I did not know what RuPaul's Drag Race was and then all of a sudden yeah. I started watching and I was yeah. like wait what is this yes is yes this, oh this is very faggoty yeah this very yes goody. this is very what I'm gonna do yeah. yeah and so I started watching it and then I was like getting my life and Aww. then I was like oh this is cute and then I saw the flyer yes and like I the first time I saw it I didn't even think about performing I was like that's not gonna be me just because like I don't think I can do it yes it's yeah. it's, the, it's also the nerves right yeah. like it's the oh my god Cause I thought about it in a okay now I'm gonna like be a woman and I think as we grow up you know we think we're gay you know and that's just it and as I got older and I started to learn about like different genders and different sexualities and like how the two come together but also are very separate right yeah. and it made me be like okay well what are you you know like what do you want to do and even at a point through my drag career I was like are you trans like is this is this what you want to do? Like, what What if you become a woman full time? Because I thought I, I really like the attention I get as a drag queen, as you know. And I was like, if I could get this 24 seven, I will flourish, honey. And then I yeah. thought, well, let's think about it. And I talked to my friends who identified as trans. And I was like, you know, like, what does it mean? You know, because I didn't want to take on this life just because I wanted extra attention. Yeah. You know what I mean? And through that is what I learned what non-binary was and like not really sticking to one gender, but having traits of both and being able to live, you know? And so mm -hmm. I was like, wow. And even being non-binary, I'm sure as you know, is a scary thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause some days I'll get up and I'll be like, do you want to be super feminine today? You know, I always have nails. So that's like my thing. Mm -hmm. And even through that, sometimes I'm like, uh, so it's it's a funny thing but I think drag has helped me with confidence yeah, honestly definitely. you know what I mean and just being a huge presence and not caring because I feel like as a drag queen to a certain extent we don't care yeah you know what I mean on stage we don't give a fuck we don't care you know when we're on stage you're a whole different person yeah. and even as I've watched you evolve in drag is an amazing thing you know our last show we did together I was blown away because you did Whitney Houston yeah. and I was like Yes, girl, like you better. And like to see you when you first performed and I knew you were really scared because you were saying in the back, you were like, oh, you know, I'm so nervous. It's my first time. And you did great your first time. All of us, trust me, go through something our first time. My makeup, I can show you old pictures of me in drag and you're going to be like, <laughs> honey, didn't know color matching. Honey, didn't understand that like there's makeup for darker skin people. You know, like I just yeah. didn't have all that. And so, it, trust me, it, it, it's crazy your first time, but to watch you perform your last time was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, to see the crowd and your energy. You had everybody, like, singing the song. You were on point, Thank honest you. to God. I, I feel like a lot of it also comes from, like, the support I feel. Mm -hmm. Like, when I perform at Splash, yeah. I was like, I obviously, like, in my head, I was like, Sometimes I pretend I have the confidence. Yes. Like I go on stage and oh, I'm like... Oh, you got to. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Even though inside I'm like... And you find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while performing, you're like, okay, yeah. okay, I feel I'm like... I'm in it, I'm in it. Yeah. Me, yes. Yeah. I get it. But I feel like for the times we have performed, mm -hmm. part of the reason I feel more comfortable throughout the year is because, like, I have that support. Yeah. Drag, and just in general, like, the gay scene mm -hmm. can be very catty. Yes. And so, like... That's one of my fears. Like, I haven't experienced that ever. Like, yeah. I've never had an issue with somebody. Nice. But that was, like, one of my fears. I'm like, what if people, like, don't like me for whatever reason? And I'm like, I don't want to get into an argument. And that makes me nervous. Absolutely. And, like, Absolutely. all of it. And so, like, having that support from all of you guys. And, like, yeah. it wasn't like, oh, I'm better than you or anything like that. Yeah. It was more mm -hmm. like, oh, welcome. Yes. Like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's we do all this. Got this. We all got this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I see it like this. I... Yes, I'm experienced when it comes to drag, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not like a celebrity drag star. You know what I mean? And like, even like the RuPaul girls, like I would hope that when even they get together in their circles and their group, it's nothing but love and support. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, we are all individuals who struggle like in life, you know, and rather to be your sexuality, your identity, home life, work, like whatever, like drag usually is an escape for yeah. a lot of people. And so I could never imagine being mean to another drag queen in a sense, catty and shady, 
all day, fine. You know, that's just gay life. We'll throw shade yeah. at each other. And it's cute little innocent shade. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But I would never want to tear anybody down for doing something that is honestly so huge in my eyes. And it's not easy getting up on stage in front of people. As you know, you performed in front of big people, like huge groups of people and small groups of people. And like, I can't imagine tearing somebody down when you're putting yourself in a vulnerable state like that. Because mm -hmm. I feel like when I'm up on stage, that is some of my most vulnerable moments. Even if I'm rapping Nicki Minaj and talking about my pussy wet. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, that's still a vulnerable moment for me. Yeah. Versus when I do a, a more slower song and I and I am you know reflecting on the song, I try to really stick true to doing things that feel right to me. You know I don't I'm not the type of drag queen that's like I got to do a top ten pop song. Like, yeah. That that was earlier drag right because you want those tips you want those money. Yeah. And as I've learned when you can connect with the audience, you can perform anything. You get them to perform A C A B C D E F G and they're gonna love it. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. you know this. Yeah. And so. I don't know. I think it's just like, it's an amazing thing. And I don't know, like, drag makes me so happy. Same. And, like, I I don't want to say that, like, I don't want to do drag anymore. Because I'm, I'm getting into this place where I want to merge Coco and Chris. And that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to figure out, well, how do I show up as Coco in my everyday life? You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, I totally yeah. get it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah! Girl, I'm gagging. We got it all on here. This is homophobic. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. What is this? Garage band? We don't like you, girl. Cancel. This is very homophobic. I literally looked over and I was like, wait, is that supposed to be there? Did it not girl, get anything? I don't think so. Because usually there's like the. Ooh. Okay, that's fine. We, we can carry it, whatever you we want. Carry it. We do it. And yeah, we do it. We do it. That's fine. As I was like performing more and more, and I realized that I do want it to take it back to Spanish music. Because yeah. that's like, I grew up in Puerto Rico. Yeah. It's like, that's the music I grew up with. And yeah. so, like, I think the first time I, no, the first time I performed a Spanish song was the second time performing. And after that, I was like, I don't know, this is like something I want to incorporate yes. from now on. Yes. And so like ever since that performance, I think every other show that I've done has had two numbers. Yeah. And I always do like a Spanish, Spanish song for the second one or the first one. That's so good. I think that it's so important to find yourself in drag and like. It's important to bring your own flair to it, right? And as, as I said, you know, I always do a Nicki Minaj song because I love Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is the person who introduced me to female rap. So like, yes, I know there was like Little Kim and like your Remy Ma's and Foxy Browns and all of that. That was not my generation of growing up, right? Like, so growing up, yes, I knew Little Kim songs, of course, but she was not out putting out songs as I was growing out. Nicki Minaj came about and like, I remember the very first Nicki Minaj song I heard was um, she was featured on Mariah Carey about my face. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's is that the words that are dressed as in red? No, they're yes, and they're all in red, yeah. and it's like a Target vibe. Yeah, yes, <laughs> very, very, very Target Target vibe. Target vibes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And like, I can literally still rap her whole verse. You know, do what it, I mean? do it, do it for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that then. <laughs> Oh my God! What was it? Uh, Mariah, I was wait no. Ah, wait. We're gonna play a snippet. We're gonna play a snippet. Okay. Let's play a snippet. Let's see. Let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's oh my God! Let me give. Want. Okay, let me see. Give the games. What let they me need. see. It, uh, Mariah, I was in the million dollar meetings. He was cheating all up in the church. He was sneaking with the deacon. Cats away while the mice will play. LOL, smiley face. Have a nice day. That's all I remember. Period. Period. You know what I mean? So like, but like, the point is, I heard this woman. And I was like. I never heard a woman flow like this or spit like And I was like, yeah. wait. And so that started my love for Nicki Minaj. And when I started drag, I was like, you got to have something with Minaj because I wanted to be this fierce woman and like who had this huge presence and was beautiful. And that to me at the time was Nicki Minaj. That's, that's what I perceived it as. And so that's how Coco Minaj came about. Yeah. And you know, to this day, you will hear a Nicki Minaj song from me. And sometimes I do songs that people, it's brand new and people don't even know her verse yet. And they're like, okay, okay. But like, I, I just love it. And so I think it's so good that you are going back to your roots and doing something that makes you happy because at the end of the day, drag should make you happy. Yeah. You know, you should be able to leave your performance and be like, yeah. I feel accomplished. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. absolutely. And I love that it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's why yeah. like, it's really fun because like what you do isn't necessarily what mm -hmm. I do and what I do isn't necessarily what yes. the next person does. Right, and exactly. it's like you get a little bit of flavor of everything. Yes. And so I love going to drag shows because of that. And yes. you see everyone 
kind of be themselves yes. and do what they love. Yes, and be, yeah. It's amazing because I think, for like example, when we did the first LaRouche drag show, all of us are so different and all of our drag styles are so different and it made such a good show like that show literally today is probably one of my top three favorite shows that i've ever done i love that it was it was so much good energy yeah. all of you came in ready to perform nobody was like scared like y'all bitches came in like they was divas like we was ready to do this yeah. and it was a huge opportunity for me it was the first time i was able to work with larousse and like t to today have this great relationship with them shout out to larouche brushes check them out they're on costco.com right now um yes honey costco.com get you a brush set um and like i and i got that because of a friend megan you know who works there and like she is dating my fraternity brother and like the fact that i had that connection and they were like yeah like let's do a drag show I, they didn't feel weird about it they embraced us. They made sure we had everything we needed. And it just overall was such a good experience. You know what I mean? And yeah, that. it was it was just so good. That was today one of my favorites. Same. Yeah. Honestly, same. Um, I was very honored when you asked. I was like, oh my God, yes, I love the drag. <laughs> and like, I love performing with you guys. Yes. I, I don't know if it's because like the first time I performed, it was with you guys. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I feel like comfortable with yes. you guys and so like yeah. when you asked me and i saw the set list and yes. it was pretty much all of us so yes. i was like oh hell you, it yeah was everybody Absolutely. i had to get the girls back yeah. and also because i just I, I you know i love sherelle i think that sherelle is first of all so funny the energy that they have is just crazy you know what i mean and i love that and Betty Fresca, as you know, who is literally like taking the world by storm right now, oh, honestly. Sephora. Sephora and like everywhere. everywhere yeah. You know what I mean? And so it just shows you that like, although we all live our separate lives, right? And we live our own like identities and we're doing our own things separate. When we come together, we know it's going to be a good show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like we're bringing in everything that we have. Yeah. And like it's, it's amazing. You know, I would literally do a show with you all all the time. I'd. Same. I would always tour. ask you all. No, for real. I would always ask you all. If I ever get the opportunity after, you know, COVID, you know, COVID girl, she's really running things right now. Um, Fuck that hope. <laughs> uh, catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> but, like, I want to do something again with all of you. You know what I mean? We got to. To, like, yeah. celebrate and just be with each other. Because I feel like everybody is so different. Everybody's doing so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it would be crazy. I would love to. Of course. Honestly, you know you're in Rona, it. Rona, you know like, you're in get it. the fuck out of here and stop oh. ruining our lives. Oh, the drag show Ooh. is going to be... Oh. It's going to be fire. We're, you know I'm performing WAP. <laughs> we love you know I'm going to do a nasty moment. Yes. Because you got to. So, yeah. You got to bring the people back in. Yeah. What's one of your best experiences performing in drag? Or like doing drag in general? Doing drag in general. What was one of my best experiences? So... When I was in Arizona doing drag, I went from doing shows for Prism, right? And then Christian, who was my drag mother, her name is Candy Lipinski. Um, she started to get gigs at bars downtown at Flagstaff. And so she, of course, invited me to do these shows. And we did countless shows. And it got to a point where we were literally probably doing two shows a month. You know, like one in the beginning, one at the end. And th those, first of all, were some of the most funnest times of my life. Getting, you know, as you know, getting dressed with everybody, chit-chatting, and you go from, you know, us to being them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's, a, it's crazy. It's like you turn into a celebrity within hours, as you know. Yeah. And I think one of my favorite things was we got invited to do a drag show at Amory Riddle, which was in um, like Tucson, Arizona or something like that. So we had to drive to get there. And so it's me, Christian, another friend. It's like four drag queens literally in a car. We're all full drag, Love honey. It. Full drag driving through Arizona, honey, to get to a drag show. Love that. So we get to this place. And first of all, honey, I don't even think they knew what drag queens were. Like that is how it was. It was very much kind of like what is going when on? When we walked in, you know, they were shook. They were shocked. And I remember being like, they they go shoot us here. Like, we about to die. Like, no, we don't. Let's talk about it for a minute. No, it, it's a fear. It's like, a fear. Yeah. Anytime I go out, just as me in general, as a non-binary individual, when I put myself in certain environments, I do have to be more cautious. And I do have to think, okay, let, let's scope out the area. Let, let's fill the vibes out. You know, there's. I think there's a really 
huge reason why people like us or non-binary individuals we don't go to a lot of straight things you know i yeah. don't honestly i don't go to straight clubs anymore um i won't go to like straight hangout spots i do try to look for more queer friendly places um just so i can feel comfortable Same. you know what i mean because like i'm not your average person yeah. and you know as you know yeah. and I luckily now in my adult life I understand how to navigate around um, certain things when it comes to my my you know me being non-binary yeah. um, but that also has made me very guarded it's made me become very like protected and even sometimes closed off to the idea of doing things um, like I'll, sh I'll share a quick story about me going to Vegas as you know I'm going to Vegas mm -hmm. for my roommate's birthday mm -hmm. my roommate is a straight male um, and I I had to sit him down and have a real conversation with him and say, hey, I need you to understand that this life that I live, you're going to start to see more of what this looks like and more of why I can be very closed off in certain situations. So for example, going through TSA, I don't know if you've had this experience with TSA. Anytime I go to the airport and I go through TSA, I literally have to go through the scanner thing nine times, honestly, because I present I, I look female, right? But you know, as you go through the scanner, they'll see some name, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, but that was a good Right. But also, I don't think that they're well trained enough to handle certain situations like that. So instead, it's kind of like, oh, go back again, or go back again, or let me call this person over. And then it becomes like this awkward, uncomfortable moment for me. And I used to not fly, honestly. I would be like, I I'll drive. Because I, I wouldn't want to put myself through that. Now, as I've gotten older, I will set myself up for success, right? So like, I will put my ID out in the little bin so they can see it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that way, if, if I do go through and they think, oh, woman, at least on my ID, they see male. And so they can just quietly do what you need to do yeah. and let's go. And so, I but like, yeah, okay. there's no go. I feel like to a certain extent, I do that, but with like clothing, when I feel oh. like, I'm not gonna be safe, or like yes. I'm like I get a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. even going to TSA or like anything major, like yep. or you know like I'm not in control of the environment. Yes. it's very scary. Yes. And so like when I do find myself in like those type of situations, I usually, even though I shouldn't have to, I do dress more masculine. Yes, or more male. Oh, of course, absolutely. Because I'm like I just want to avoid having to have that conversation, and also just being like as questions that I don't want to be asked and yeah. you know what I mean so like I usually put, try to protect myself in that way yeah. of like dressing differently so that I won't get harassed because I've been harassed yes. multiple times in yes. downtown San Jose yes. like I've been yelled at I've been yelled yep. faggot mm -hmm. I've been like you know what I mean and so like I do understand where you're also coming from when yeah. it comes to like straight places because yes. I'm like this is not a, this is not for me. Yeah, it's like not, they don't not welcome. Me. Yeah, it's not and, a welcoming environment. Yeah, and it's not to sound pessimistic. Like I yeah. know a lot of people are allies, but yes, it's a safety thing again. Yes. Going back to that, like mm -hmm. we're not always gonna be in a safe space. Yeah. So we always like feel like, at least for me, like I always am looking over my shoulder. Yeah. Like I'm never oh, 100%. at ease in no. public. No, yeah. never. And I think what what I've had to really learn is one to just surround myself with good people right and i've had to learn not to be closed off to straight people that want to be my friend and want to be my ally because not every straight person is gonna do you wrong you know yeah. what i mean and that is still something that i'm learning same and i think that especially with men yeah oh men absolutely yeah and so like even like now i i'm, I'm getting very comfortable in my non-binary life and just how just how to do things now so like now i only go to women's restaurants i don't even I haven't been in a man's restroom and I can't tell you how long. If it's not gender, like gender free or like women, I don't even like. Yeah. Because also now I've learned, I, anytime I even walk in a guy's bathroom, people are like, oh, this is the men's restroom. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me go. And also, I don't know if you experience this or if you go into women's restrooms like that out in public, but like women are so nice. <laughs> Women will compliment you. Women will talk to you for 30 minutes in the mirror while we fix our makeup. Like, I appreciate that. And I'm not saying that men can't do that because yeah. I have some great straight men in my life, honest to God. But I, I feel more at ease going to a woman's restroom. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think when, when, we, when these huge debates come up about like, well, should we not put gender on bathrooms? Should we let both genders in bathrooms? 
I think people who are very closed off to that is one, because they don't know anybody who walks that life. Yeah. You don't know how uncomfortable it can be for a non-binary individual to have to go into a man's restroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because where do you go first? The stall. You automatically need a stall. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna pee in front You're of guys no, like that. Yeah, I don't know you. I never, yeah. No. No. And like, yeah. you feel me? If, and it ain't no hookup type of situation. Ain't no glory hole up in here, honey. No, I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think it's all about just becoming comfortable with yourself first honestly and even now as somebody who has been non-binary for months now you know i've I really started to use the the phrase non-binary and it was scary at first yeah. you know because people ask questions people are like well what does this mean you know like are you trans now people always go back to are you trans for me i don't know yeah. how they do it with you but honey let me keep continue growing this hair out people are like oh trans even dating guys I have to educate the guys I date or talk to because they will come into a situation thinking I am a trans individual yeah. and that I am not. Like I am under the trans umbrella and I appreciate that, but I'm not in the same struggle as our trans sisters and brothers. You yeah. know what I mean? And I would never take that away from them ever because mm. I don't know what it's like to go through hormones or go through operations or go through like physical, you know, like it, it's a lot, you know, and I think being non-binary is, it's a great teaching opportunity, honestly, for a lot of people. And I've learned when I'm having conversations, people are like, you know, I had no idea. I didn't even know what that was, I, you know, so. And surprisingly, a lot of people are, are understand, like once you explain yes. to them, like my fear, at least for me, like, it's like, are they gonna like attack me? Like, mm -hmm. are they gonna like feel some type of way? Mm -hmm. But, for the most part, the majority of people I've told, they're like, oh, chill. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, okay. You know what I mean? For me, it was the first time I understood that I was non-binary was through college. I was in my sophomore year of college. Mm -hmm. And then I used to hang out. And I still talk to Nick. But, like, when we were in school together, we would hang out a lot more often, too. And, like, I saw them. And they were my first introduction to a non-binary person mm. and at the time like I've always struggled with how I feel about myself like growing up I didn't feel like I was a woman necessarily or I wanted to be but I also didn't feel comfortable being a man yeah. or like being like you know what masculine I mean? yeah masculine mm -hmm. and so like for the longest time I was like oh I'm gay that's just it yeah yeah that but, but because that's all we know yeah you know straight you know gay you know bisexual mm -hmm. that's it yeah that's there, it. there was no in between for me and even being being gay was what I liked. You know what I mean? That was just yeah. me liking another man. But like, as far as gender was concerned, I I identify with that. I never thought that I never thought that I was like oh, I want to be a woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there are moments where I think could life be a little easier. Absolutely, of course. But I never was like, well, let, let's try. Like, let's go and try to get hormones and figure this kind of stuff out. And then even being a guy, I've never been really into like masculine things whatever that means you know what i mean like playing sports she didn't do that uh what is that i was never i didn't i wasn't even one of the kids that went outside and played rough outside i didn't want to get my clothes dirty yeah. so like you know like what did you think i was gonna do you know so yeah. like when i, I play sports but only volleyball the girl i played of... tennis honey and i did one tennis game and i only did it because i wanted the shorts after that i quit tennis high like, eagle high shorts i'm set yeah i was like i don't need nothing else i can just walk around school with these shorts period that's what i did and you know, so like, unbothered, un unbothered, honey. And like, it's so funny because I, as I, as growing up, even wearing bags now. You know, I've been wearing bags since ninth grade. You know what I mean? And like, back then, like I didn't even, I, I, I didn't think about it like that. And now it's such a staple to my life that I have like a closet full of bags, literally a closet full of bags. And it's like, wow, like that is a part of me that scared me in the beginning. Changing over and buying women bags, I was like, oh my god. People are gonna think you're crazy. And now I got big ones, small ones, heavy. Like, you know, and it's like, wow. It, it is you unpacking your own issues with yourself, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And it's an everyday struggle. It's a struggle for everybody. Yeah. But like, like, what do you do? You keep pushing, right? Because yeah. you only got one life. That's what I said. Like, I've had these conversations before and I was like, I'd rather put myself, even though I know I'm gonna be at risk mm -hmm. in certain situations by being visibly queer yeah i'd rather do that than mm -hmm. to live a life that i'm not happy with. yes like i don't want to die and like why am i living a life for other people they don't give a shit about me like why yes. am i even struck like why am i gonna be someone 
for people that aren't in my, mm. aren't even in my life mm. or aren't even like important to me. Right. I'm like, right. that's not living. Yeah. And if they were in my life, they would understand that, yes. you know, this is just how it this is. This is how it is. This yeah. is me. And like, honestly, I think that people, the people who are in my life that are not non-binary or not in the LGBTQ family or whatever, um, I get told a lot that they have so much respect for me because I do live out loud and bold. And as, you know, queer people, you know, I have dated people who are not out. I have dated men who, um, you know, have kids or why, you know, and things like that. Um, and through that, I've had to learn how to self love myself and understand that I can't look for the affection that I think I want from someone else to complete me wholly. You know what I mean? Even in like relationships, you know what I mean? Like normally nine times out of 10, I'm usually someone's first person non-binary individual that they're dating or even sleeping with and so i've had to learn not to take it so personal anymore because one yes i'm here to help you and be there for you if you want that but i'm not here to be anybody's crutch yeah because i had to go through it on my own and i had to figure out when it made sense to me and everybody has to go through that you can only help people so far and i think it's hard for me being non-binary because i just want to help everybody i want everybody to understand that like you are an amazing person you deserve everything you think you need and want no matter what someone says or what someone did to you like you gotta you have to move on in life and like one of the best things someone told me which i said in my youtube video was you have to be okay with not receiving the apologies you felt you deserved and like that was when i was going through a time where like people were like leaving me left and right friends boyfriends family and just the world seemed so crazy and I became very hard and angry and I expected people to show up like I showed up and apologized and worked it out and I realized that wasn't the case. People didn't see it that way. And so being non-binary and being feminine, being out loud like this, you I've had to learn that if I don't love myself, when I find out that other people didn't love me how I thought they loved me, it, it'll destroy me. You know, and so that's why now you see me like living out loud and you'll see me on YouTube like crying my eyes out because I thought I liked this guy. And like, it's embarrassing at first. It's very embarrassing to be vulnerable yeah. in a setting where you don't know who's going to watch it. Right. When I put those videos out, I was like, immediately I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> I was like, everybody's going to see this and people are going to see me crying in the picture and they're going to be like, click, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And all the love that I got. Oh my God, it was amazing. It was amazing. And even with like outfits, um, now that I have shown my life fully on social media, my family sees it. Now my family sends me makeup. My family has sent me kimonos and things. And like you see, cause I'll post about it. Cause yeah. I think, I think it's so important for everyone to see that. Like the good even, stuff. The yeah, good yeah. stuff. Even as a 28 year old, I still have insecurities about myself and about who I am and about the way I show up. And the fact that my family and my friends who I have put in my life support me enough to gift me or whatever do things that they know I like is astonished it's amazing because yeah. at one point it wasn't like this as you know growing up gay like gay just became an end thing like I don't think yeah. people understand that um yes gay people have always been here but it's not always been a very popular thing to be gay yeah. you know and there are some of us who grew up in that light of being bullied and being teased and being made fun of and all this stuff to now these younger generations of people who are 13 kissing their boyfriends on YouTube. What? What? I had to sneak in the bathroom in, in school to even think about being with a guy. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, but that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And I hope that if I ever adopt children or bring children into this world that I can pass that on to them and see you know because there's so much bad in the world but there's also little things and little nuggets of good that I think we need to focus on so much more when it comes to things like the LGBTQ yeah. lifestyle you know what I mean yeah. and like there's so much work to be done so much fighting still left and I saw you out there marching honey you, oh. <laughs> honey was marching soul sister I saw you know what I mean and I think that's amazing and that's stories that you'll be able to share you literally change a moment in time and that's amazing you know what i mean yeah so. yeah i feel that no i feel the same yeah. i feel like and a lot of it is just trying to unpack 
all the years that we had to hide who we were mm -hmm. or like we were told one thing and like for me i grew up in a religious setting yeah. all the time like yeah. at home at home like it wasn't that religious like mm -hmm. my aunt who raised me like she was like chill she mm -hmm. wasn't like she's not into any religion she's mm -hmm. like i don't really believe in it and mm -hmm. it's fine if you do you do but i don't yeah um but i went to christian schools throughout my whole life like growing up like i only went to private schools in puerto rico and they were all, all most private schools in puerto rico are christian or yeah. baptist or yeah. you know very religious and for like growing up it really it was really harmful for me to constantly hear them that what i was was an abomination mm. and that what i was was wrong and they literally i at the time i didn't know i was being introduced to a trans person but i was and now i understand that i understand that now but at the time i didn't know and they said that they were talking about the story of a trans person like transitioning and they literally forced them to untransition like they constantly mm -hmm. bombarded them with and i'm not saying this is true for all religious yeah, people yeah. but like growing up this was my experience yes and so like seeing that was very like i didn't know what that like trans man at the time but even then i was like this is not right this is not sitting well with me like why mm -hmm. are you doing this to uh, this person and like yeah and like growing up i never really had that support and in school i was bullied a lot because mm. you know like yeah, it's that setting in itself like yeah. being a religious setting it was like obviously being gay was not even a thing that was no, mentioned absolutely not and so like it was very harmful for me like growing up i felt very very alone mm -hmm. i felt very sad mm -hmm. and i don't know even the friends that i had at the time like yeah we're like i just still talk to some of them but like even with friends i didn't feel like i fit in anywhere because even if they were cool with me like i feel like they didn't fully know me and yeah. i wasn't comfortable fully coming out no of course yeah but absolutely now i feel like for at least for me and i feel like for a, lot of, a lot of us too it's like trying to unpack all our trap like past trauma and like mm -hmm. our past experiences and mm -hmm. like trying to finally like be free and live how mm -hmm. we want to live instead yeah. of living for someone else or something. absolutely no, absolutely. Everybody <laughs> on my YouTube channel, hi. Um, we are going to stop the video here for me. Um, don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And also, I'm going to link the podcast down below so you can continue listening to the podcast if you want to just hear what we're going to say more in depth. Um, definitely go on and give them a subscribe as well. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for having me. Bye.